in the music business are making a living. <laughs> the rest, you have to have a job. Because when you, when you put a band together, especially a metal band, and it's not a pop band, then don't expect to make money. You won't. And you shouldn't be expecting or putting, the, putting that, that pressure on yourself and on your band to, to do that. Because if you do, the band is not going to last at all. You've got to do it from the heart because you love it, and that's why you do it. And everything that you do is adjusted and customized so you can do it. You have to set up your life in such a way that you have the time and the space and the money to continue and create music and put records out and make a go of it. It's not about the making the money. It's about, about making the music. That's really part and parcel to why Animal has lasted is because I never put the stress of, I've got to make a living from this. Wrong. That's the wrong way to go. You're doing it because you love it. And everything that you do in life, whether you're going to make a job, whether you're going to sell drugs, I don't give a fuck what to call it. You're doing it so that you can do your music. That's why, you know. And I would say, like I, like I honestly really believe, 99% of the music industry is made up with people who do it because they love it, not because they're making millions of dollars. 1% is that. If all the bands make a living, everybody else is paying to be there. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I uh, I started out playing not that long after you guys did. And the, the least favorite time in my musical career is when I was making a living playing music in the 80s. And the, I had to play covers. That was the only way. You know, and I was singing Cliff Richard songs. And, and I never had the freedom to do my own thing until years later when I realized that the music business leaves a lot to be desired. And if you don't get it in your head at some point, it took me a long time to figure out, I do my music today for the love of the music and no other reason. And if anything wonderful happens, great. But like you say, if you go in there with the attitude that you're going to make a million dollars, well, you know, good luck and keep buying those lottery tickets, right? Yeah, you've got a, you've got a better chance winning a lottery. Yeah, Absolutely. And especially in today's world, where Spotify, they pay us peanuts. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, and you don't get paid really anything for terrestrial radio play anymore. So guys that are just looking for the money might as well just go work at the post office, right? That's right. You're not doing, you don't choose music as your, as your business if, that's, if you're doing if it to make money. you got to be an idiot. I think anybody in their right mind knows that immediately. <laughs> the same starving musician doesn't doesn't just come out of the uh, thin air. It comes from reality. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that goes for, for art of any type. It's very much taken for granted by humanity, but it's probably it's really one of the most important aspects of humanity that, that, that never gets the respect it really deserves. It's the only things that the human race actually creates that doesn't wear out and fade away and, and break and, and have to be replaced. I can still listen to Strawberry Fields forever. I can still listen to I can still listen to Painted Black or I can still listen to, to Satisfaction. I can still listen to Purple Haze or I can still listen to uh, the first Led Zeppelin album. They last forever. Music is here forever. That's the beautiful thing about it. And it's the, one of the least respected things. Like, look at right now with, with all this closing down of our world, with what we've done with this COVID thing, music is going to be the last thing to come back. And it should be the first. <laughs> you know what I think, Steve? I think that, and I'm hoping that out of this, people have a renewed interest and appreciation for the music. I mean, like you say, it's. I think it's, they will. I think that, you know, you don't know what you got till it's gone. And I think that there's a, a great wisdom in that, in the sense that when people start realizing, wow, I can't go to a club to see a band. Oh, I can't go to a concert hall to go see a band. I haven't seen a live band in two years. Wait till it all comes back. They'll be coming and they'll be going out again. You know? And you, you learn to appreciate it once it's not there. And I really, it has to go through this in order for the, everything to right itself again, I guess. And I got to sit tight and persevere, not being able to work 
which really sucks. Yeah, I get you, man. I get you. I mean, music is our our life, and uh, we've been really kind of pushed back. But again, the hope is that people are going to have a renewed faith and and renewed interest and appreciation. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Now, you guys are are working on your 19th studio album to date. <laughs> I want them to call the next album Handle 19. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's see if you can get the anvil to resemble the word COVID. Yeah. That's yeah, that's well, they both have a V in it. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It kind of did that to me. I'm going, wait, wait a second. <laughs> so then I don't know how it would go over. So we're going to yeah. come up with something else. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody's going to make a million bucks writing the uh, COVID blues, you know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Now, unlike most people in the entertainment business, from what I gather, and I know that you refer to Facebook as Wastebook, I get that because it takes up so much time and there's so much BS, but are you completely done with social media or what are your thoughts? I left Facebook, I don't know, about a year or more ago. I got really fed up. I'm sick and tired of the politics. I'm sick and tired of people whining and complaining. I'm sick of people bragging and boasting and, and I'm really sick and tired of bullshit because most of it is it's just crap. You know, people don't read, people comment, they don't know what they're commenting on. It, it's just endless. They're just kind of fed up. I've had enough. Yeah, and you know, it's not an easy thing to do because it's a real rabbit hole, but I'm, I'm guessing that you've got a lot more quality time these days and you're getting a lot more accomplished than if you were still, you know, on that phone for, I don't know. Well, probably, probably so much the wasting of time, but it's the emotional aspect that actually gets you depressed. Yeah. You sit on there and you start reading through stuff and eventually it takes its toll in the sense that you get depressed. Like, I don't need to read this shit. Yeah. Most of it is just shit, not even based on facts. How about this, Steve? You know, in your life, what have we got? Like 10 people that we could call really good friends on average, right? And all of a sudden, with social media, you got thousands of people that you don't even know. So imagine if you're sitting at a campfire with your 10 best friends, right? And all of a sudden, a thousand people show up and they're all talking and in different directions that's kind of how I see it it's like uh, it's like that whole honking geese thing nothing makes sense because there's so much noise oh I don't know man it's just to a great degree that it lowered my expectations and my view of intellect of the world it made me come to realize wow people are really it's really low brow people are really uneducated it's actually really upsetting to, to actually look at it on the overall picture of things it, and it's not like oh I'm kind of the king of the castle I'm the king on the mountain and I'm, I've got all the intellect no that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying oh my god our people are stupid wow it's just a, a sound yes. some of the stuff that's being posted there you're going no one reads I think that's the biggest the biggest problem no one reads and no one and no one bothers to research that's right I mean people believe anything they see and that's kind of crazy Oh boy. Yeah, and, uh, you, you see a picture of the Rolling Stones and somebody's called the Meryl's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I want to get back to the music for a minute. I know that you have a really <laughs> wide and diverse appreciation for music in general. I remember when you guys played that show in London, you were you were really excited about Chuck Berry. I think did you guys actually cover Johnny Be Good or something? There was a reason you were you were talking about Chuck Berry and you were just excited about it. No, I was just we do a, we have one of our songs called Badass Rock and Roll and I I probably talking about Chuck Berry because I loved him. He was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had so many awesome influences back in the day, that's for sure. Now, you guys, aside from the, the documentary, The Story of Anvil, you've uh, done some TV work. I know that you guys had some cameos on Sons of Anarchy. How did that come about? Well, Kurt Suter and Katie, Katie Segal lived across the street from the director of the Anvil movie, and we got well, their fans. They became fans. I became friends with them, and uh, Kurt decided that he needs to get a 
us on the show. That's really at the beginning of the whole thing. It was for the second season. We recorded the song Slip Kid by The Who with Frankie Perez singing. He had us do that. And also, we were in the second episode of the second season as gun runners. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a feather in the cap for sure, yeah. Were there any other movie or TV appearances? Of- no, we were in the Green Hornet. They used the song Metal on Metal for the Simpsons. I forget that there's a couple of places. It ended up in, we ended up on that Guitar Hero or whatever that game was. There's a few places that it ended up. Our song 666 was in the movie It. Sweep Away Camp 2, we had a song. There's another movie that Bridges was in. I can't remember the name of the movie. It's really vague to me. So, yeah, our, our, our music has been used in movies and different things like that. Yeah, great. Yeah, would you say that all these things kind of came because of the documentary? or, or... Of course. Yeah. yeah. So of course. that was, was a real springboard for you guys. Yeah, yeah well, we surfaced the band. It rejuvenated our entire career to the point that it actually gave us a career. Right. And we're far more successful today than we ever have been, which people seem to say in your in the good old days when you guys were big and I'm going funny that I don't remember it that way, but okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you do a half a dozen great shows, they call that your big time, okay, whatever. But meanwhile, you know, go on tour with with A C D C with Saxon and and everything that we've got endless tours that we've done all in the last 10 years, none of that counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But meanwhile, you know, like I said, I haven't had a day job in 13 years, so I would say that the Apple movie made a big difference and gave me a, a living that I never had. It made me uh, part of the 1% that I was talking about initially at the beginning of the interview. I make a living from my music. And I'm one of the one percenters of the music industry that actually makes a living from my music. And to be really completely honest, it's not really directly from my music as much as it is from my T-shirt sales and CD sales. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a strong merch department and, and a way to get it to the people. Speaking of that, where can people go to get your music and your merch where you guys actually get paid fairly? I mean, right now we're being handled by AFM Records, so our newest CD, Legal of Asking, is bought from, from there on Amazon, and it's done very, very well. And the newest album is really, really great. Things are going, went very well in the fact to the point where we recouped all the expenses for that album, which is a big deal. That's a big deal. And the label is extremely happy and it would have done way even better if there had been touring, but we got cut off, so we have to be happy with what we got, and uh, that's the way it goes. Right, yeah, so if people do a quick Google search for AFM, as in Alpha, Frank, Mary, they'll uh, be able to hook up with your music and merchandise? Yeah, or Amazon. You can find many of our records on Amazon. I think that there's still some of our old catalog still available from SCB. That's because they re, they reissued some of our back catalogs, so you can get some of it through there. So that's SPV, like Sam, Papa, Victor? Yep. Okay. All right, cool. Well, you know, on something else, I actually went into a local record store here in London and ordered Legal Up Last. And they got it in for me, so I guess people can do it the old-fashioned way as well. Yeah, you can go to the record store and you can order it there. They'll, they'll send it. They'll be able to get it for you, no problem. Right, yeah. Now, you guys have been together for a long, long time. You've gone through some lineup changes, and I know, you know, there's issues that people are people and stuff happens. I've been there, done that, but... Uh, I guess that it's only been in recent years that you and Rob have decided that you have to be in charge and that it's only going to work if you guys are, are the bosses. Well, that's it. Yeah. We tried other ways of doing it, and at the end of the day, it doesn't, 
it, it's not fair to yourself actually. 